Hello everybody, welcome to the Sound Test Stream. Today we are taking a look at Synth Master 2 and its additive synthesis uh, capabilities. So uh, it's another one of the Synth Master 2 superpowers. It's another one of the synth engines included with Synth Master 2 additive synthesis, uh, which is great for creating things like organs and stuff like that, but lots of other cool stuff as well. So we shall we shall see what we shall come up with in the next half hour or so. Um, I'd like to say hello to everybody who's here. Hi, hello, Aquatic. Hi, Wal. Um, hi, J Jamie. Do, 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 Colin, Marcus, Aquatic, um, Dave, Sam. Hello, Joe, uh, Stephen, of course, and Synthwit. Uh, Joe. I'm just reading off the blinking list here. Look, uh, Dave. Anyone else who's here as well? Welcome. Welcome, welcome. So first thing to do, we're gonna we'll just initialize this preset which I have here. I'm using a little key step, but you can't see that. Hi spider. So additive synthesis, to find it, you go into the the, the th when it says type here, you tap on basic. And this is where you can choose all your different synth types, basic additive, wavetable, vector. We've done vector, uh, we're gonna do additive today, so we tap on additive. And just to close that there, you'll see that we are basically got this exactly the same sound. So, well, I, I, I would really like to be able to modulate each one of these, but you can't do that. But we can't have everything, you know, there you go. But anyway, so you'll see the first one here in the additive boxes. This, you can stack up to eight waveforms, but it's kind of like how a draw bar organ works, if you can kind of think of it like that. For instance, if we change this saw wave here to a sign, just tap on that, and then this square wave here to a sign. I'll just go back and go sign. We have a sine wave now, and you this is very cool. If you if you if you if you pay attention to what this does, you'll go. Well, this is quite. This is really quite powerful stuff. Before we touch any modulation or effects or anything like that, <coughs> excuse me. The waveform, of course, is uh, the ADSR, is digital. So it's like an organ waveform to start with. Anyway, but we have different types of. Um, different types of ADSR algorithms here. We have the digital, the fatty, the profat, and the OB. They're all very similar until you start to add extra stuff in. So additive synthesis, as opposed to subtractive synthesis, is you're starting with subtractive synthesis, you start with something that's harmonically rich, like a saw wave or a square wave with all the harmonics in there. And then you kind of, you're taken away from that sound to create another sound. So you're either filtering or taking away the attack, etc. Now you still do all that kind of stuff with additive, except that your basic starting point is something really basic, like a sign or a saw or whatever. And then you're adding into that, into that thing. So we have this and it works like a like a like an organ drawbar kind of thing. We can move up each of these eight sine waves at the moment, but we can change these waves to anything we like. But however, the example is this. I'll do yeah, there we go. Now I will lower the volume a bit. So now we've got kind of a, a, an organ type of vibe going on. Let's just take some of the bite off that. And at this point, it might be nice to change it to the pro fat algorithm. I'm always remember to keep an eye on the levels for layer one. So theoretically, you can you've got eight of these waveforms that you can stack on top of each other, but you have two oscillators and you have two layers. So theoretically, you could have an additive synthesizer built of thirty-two uh, patches, uh, thirty-two layers of uh, waveforms. So that's quite huge. 
it's not, yeah, well, it's not really fiddly. I mean, it's easy to, it's easy to use while kind of thing. However, another thing as well is see, where it says here parameter, at the moment we're changing and controlling the level of the, the waveform, and you can hear how adjusting each waveform interacts with the sound. But if you tap on where it says waveform here, then you can control the volume. Now, this will change your watch. For instance, let's go with, say, maybe uh, the pan position. And you'll see underneath now, there's some little uh, faders. So, if you're listening through headphones, of course. So now we've spread out our sine waves. That's quite loud still, so let's make sure we can take this down to about there. So I'm gonna play a chord, so. So if you're listening through headphones, you'll hear all these different sine waves are now in a different position in the stereo field. So. Then we also have drift. We can we can keep we can key track as well. By the way, as you would think, key track works. But drift, however, if we take the speed of drift up, this this simulates uh, analog oscillation drift, like you know, in the old synthesizers where your oscillators would would be difficult to stay in tune. However, if we move our amount up here. So now you're getting some kind of detuning going on, depending on the amount of drift you have. We don't need to worry about that just yet. So, so there's pan, and then we also have we can choose we can control the volume with with a a different a, an actual controller. So I'm not sure if I can if I pick up an LFO now, for instance. I can change, I can hook up the LFO to uh, any of those as well. So we might have some fun with that shortly as well. And that might be very cool. As long as there's a physical control, you can modulate it, you know. But you'll see, on volume, the actual knob control is controlling the actual knob being made is controlling this with this and then we have we've, we've done pan then we have detune so this is cool right so still on volume for the main page but Hi Daniel. So it's starting to sound quite odd now. And then the next one, we have phase. So I, I think the easiest way, I'm just gonna initially reset the patch. Just gonna quickly go back into add because I'm getting out of control and I don't want to spend all my time. I don't want to spend all my time having to reset knobs. So we've just added some volume back in for each of these uh, waveforms here. So then we have phase for each one of these. And you're not gonna really, we, you might, you're not really gonna hear it with a sine wave, but this first one, you might. This is where it comes in really interesting when when you start to add in interesting waveforms or wavetables. 
Um, before we do that though, let's look. And then we have tone. Tone is kind of like filtering. Again, you'll hear it better on another kind of um, wave. So let's let's change a couple of these waveforms out, and then you, right? The algorithm. This is this is the interesting one, right? So algorithm. You have low pass. You have different algorithms for each of these as well. So for instance, at the moment it's on low pass, you see, and then you have bend, sync. Uh, and all there. Uh, maybe spectrum, low shelf. And these all make a difference to the sound. But if we go back to our waveform now. and change some of these waveforms out. So for instance, in this first one, we've got a, a sawtooth and then let's open up the, let's open up this last one. So we have all our basic stuff, sound triangle, but then we have waveforms and these are like, there's tons and tons, hundreds and hundreds of these. Hundreds. These are good, like your wave tables. This is when scanning through them with the tone and stuff or, or uh, uh, really, really makes a difference. So for instance, if we go to, to something like uh, AM and change that to maybe a, this one. When we turn down the volumes, that's that waveform. So, and you can hardly hear it, right? But let's maybe mess with the algorithm for that. Maybe that one. And then maybe we can see what the, we know the volume is full, but maybe we could change the phase. Or maybe like you think, you think well, maybe it is, it is a little bit quiet, but it will add something to some sound somewhere. Maybe we could go with um, changing that waveform out to say uh, this one, or maybe a, this, or we could use a sample. Let's leave it on there. But now blending it back in with the others. Very nice. Change another one for maybe uh, another sample. Oh, crash. Might have to start again here. <laughs> Didn't like that waveform, did it? So, so I'm gonna stick, I'm gonna try another sample maybe. Oh, these are kind of. Okay, so you can also, of course, if we select any of these, the detuning, you can add modulation. 
as well. So we could have an LFO modulate that. Easy enough to set them to default as well so so there's a basic sound for oscillator one I'm gonna to go to my routing section here and I'm gonna choose split there which will go oscillator one into filter one and oscillate two into filter two okay so there's that and I'm gonna switch filter one on And I'm going to play around a little bit with I'm going to play around with the uh, ADSR Use an LFO to modulate the frequency. So I'm just going to drop it on the. I'm going to slow it down as well. So it's quite that already is quite a majestic sound. Okay, so let's go to and um, we've got an overall volume here. So we can turn that sound down. Let's switch oscillator one off for a moment. Go into oscillator two. It's it's basic, so we can turn the volume up a little bit. And let's again change this one to additive. And let's make a, a few changes this time we'll use some waveforms maybe FM change this one as well so waveforms to And don't forget oscillator one and oscillator two are at the moment sharing the same ADSR that's controlling the volume. Uh, maybe we'll put that on a pulse. And for the pulse we'll change the phase. Or we won't hear it. And I'm, I tell you what I'm going to do as well, because of that, because of the pull, because we've got a pulse wave. Let me turn them down. We'll use one of our LFOs, one of our four LFOs. So let's hold on to this. Use LFO two here, and we will modulate the pulse wave with the second LFO. So we'll just pick that up and drop it onto the pulse wave there. Let's choose a different waveform for that as well. Uh, 
That's quite nice. So that's just the, the one waveform in that added. Oh, that's, sorry, that's the phase. I'm mixing that with oscillator one. Make sure our volume is sensible for layer one. So you're hardly hearing that now, see? So oscillator two, we'll switch on filter, we'll switch off oscillator one again. Switch on filter two, which if we look with our routing, we routed oscillator two, two, excuse me, two filter, filter two. We won't mod that one. That's lush. Let's make it even slower and increase the release. Remember to save, we'll just save the preset as um, we can do testing TSTR add and that'll we'll just save it there just so we've got it. Add a little bit of drift as well to oscillator two, but have it quite slow. So again, it'll be barely noticeable. But we'll add something to the patch. sound quite nice now if what we could do is if we go into the volume we could modulate the volume for some of these we could use <coughs> let's use say LFO uh, number three which doesn't haven't got any targets yet and let's just add that the volume change to a few of them in in uh, in oscillator two, of course. This is our second layer. We could add. We could go back and add them to the first layer as well. But let's just add a couple in here. Let's add one to the. Let's add that one to the. Let's add one to number three. Let's add one to this one. So now we'll get a variation in volume across the waves as well. 
and again slowing it down might be a good idea or maybe even changing the shape triangles are usually quite good for this kind of thing add some noise So we're triggering the, the, the where the where each time you press a key, it'll trigger this LFO in a random position. Again, adding a little bit more variation. So if we go back to oscillator one now, let's add this volume LFO to few of the other patches, a uh, few of the other sounds as well. Don't have to add them to all of them, <laughs> just for fun, you know. The top end is quite a, a, a haunting sound. There's a lot going on now, of course. Don't forget, you've now we've got different things going on with um, basically eight different waveforms. Um, Jeffrey nice so two oscillators now we've got about 16 different editions of uh, waveforms is really lovely I think it's time to add some effects <laughs> can't have this without effects so there's tons going on there <laughs> it's really rich. Thanks, Spider. And a little bit strange because we've got some drift and different, like, kind of weird drifty stuff going on. Okay. So we've used three LFOs as well so far. Let's go back to that one. So let's go into our effects now and the first effect uh the desk the definitely wants is is like a, a great big huge washy reeve it might in fact it might not even need much more so if we long hold on here let's go with let's choose yeah we might add some chorus and stuff because that'll add we have choruses and phases and flanges and things like that 
will add even more movement to the sound, especially if they're slow. You, you don't want them too fast because they start to, you know what I mean? Uh, save it, save it now. Yes, I will save it again. So save, preset. So there you go. Yes, I'd like to overwrite it. Thank you. So we'll hold this and we'll go, first place we'll go as our reverb. Probably a four to turn it up a little bit now. And don't forget that this is still only using layer one. So what I'm going to do is make this reverb huge. So I'm going to turn the size right up as well and the time. So I want this to be big. Now, the modulation and reverb is really nice as well. So that will add more movement. So we'll turn the modulation amount really high. But the modulation speed will have really, really slow. So this should sound quite cathedrally. back into my waveforms and change this waveform that's better it's a nicer waveform for that first one in the second oscillator So huge, very nice. Now I've dropped the octaves as well. Hi Kenny. That's really nice. So what else can we can we bung in here? Uh, I think definitely some lo-fi. Oh no, 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 no. I want some distortion. Just where it starts to... There.
super. And I like to bad it really, isn't it? We don't need to go any further really. Um, don't <laughs> let's have that as a stereo as well. Although we're not really hearing it much, it's just there. <laughs> Sounds all right, doesn't Cool wings, eh? I think additive synthesis. Additive synthesis. Uh, what happens is if I'm holding a key and I start playing with parameters, it will it will freak the MIDI out. Um, is really 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 cool beans. Um, we couldn't. I mean, we can completely change that sound out as well if we wanted to. We could turn. We could very probably very quickly turn it into a. Uh, into an arpeggiator type sound if we drop the attack and the so if we if we go quickly into our arpeggiator our, our arpeggiator now and we turn it on <laughs> let me just check the mode the mo let me just go into see big screen and um Oh, that's recording. Oh, well, I mean, I could record the sequencing. So let's like. And now, turn it on. Now we need to sort out the volumes. Set that to eight steps. So it repeats. Thank you. 
So it's quite it's quite variable now. So hi captain. So you we've gone from a pack just by mess just by you can <laughs> almost any sound can do this of course. <coughs> Excuse me. We've gone from a really lush pad with all these different waveforms. And of course playing with the waveform volumes which we wear with the LFOs as well. I think it was maybe it was LFO. Yeah, it was LFO six. We were using LFO three. Sorry, we were using for volume target volumes. Let's let's make this really wide as well. If you're listening through headphones now, you'll hear that it's going to get really wide. So I'm panning hard left and hard right uh, most of these um, waves. So, like that. And then, just quickly, we could go back to our, very quickly, we can go back to our pad sound. Very easy, go to our ARP sequence, and we'll just switch that off. Oh, you, again, more like a keyboard. Thank you very very much for joining me this evening gang um i hope you enjoyed that uh another patch design tutorial but didn't focusing on additive synthesis of course probably went a bit over the top to be fair although it does sound quite nice and we can have a look at our So it has a nice long decay. That distortion's messing it up, so. Guys, thanks so much for joining me this evening anyway. Uh, hopefully I'll be back tomorrow with some more... Who knows? Who knows what madness will be tomorrow? Who, who, who can tell? So I'm... I'm, I'm oh dear, crash again. Uh, oh. So... Oh, here we go. So you'll find that most of the organ sounds have been, I've, I've used the, and of course they use sine waves. Or oh, layer two. Nice, got a sine wave as a constant. 
Anyway, guys, brilliant. I'll let you say ta to each other for a, a, a couple of minutes, and I will see you all tomorrow. Ta-da.